Canada, we have Canadian Evidence Law, Ontario Evidence Act, as well as common law. So the biggest thing people learn about the subject and the kind of mistake they make about the subject is they are not very comfortable about when to move from the Canadian Evidence Act and then to move from Ontario Evidence Act and when to use common law. So you have wonderful prescribed syllabus on this. So you would see how Canadian Evidence Law has been evolved, how has it been applied and the NCA exam is basically trying to make you aware of about all the rules of admissibility, relevancy, and the proven cases in uh, Canadian evidence. So Canadian evidence is taking guidance from uh, common law, but it also goes beyond the common law as well, because we have a specific statute and in our statute we'll do whatever we need to do. So we have evolved our own system as per the Canadian evidence law. So Canadian evidence law is used everywhere. So first of all, overview of the subject is about the adversarial adjudication process in this. So first of all, we will in first few lessons, we will try to understand what the Canadian court system looks like. So when we use the evidence, how it looks like in practice. Next thing we have is the rules regarding that how Canadian constitution influence the uh, uh, evidence law and how the charter has further um, you know help us to evolve in another way right why because when we look at the charter rights you have section 8 of the charter which says every everybody has right over unreasonable search and seizure have you done uh, lincoln uh, canadian uh, 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 criminal law exam Okay, so in Canadian constitution, we have charter rights, which are similar to human rights. And in that, we learn that section 8 says everybody has right to unreasonable search and seizure. Correct? Protection against unreasonable search and seizure. So if I'm a cop, I cannot come and frisk your bag, right? And take out something for no reason. I should have war warrants or I should have some kind of urgency to do so. So in this case, we are trying to understand that Canadian evidence law has common law as a component it has con uh, constitution influence and of course it has a statute itself so first of all we'll talk about how constitution influence it right canadian constitution influenced by saying you have a charter right section 24 2. section 24 2 says whenever your charter rights have been infringed you have a right to go and complain about that and get exclusion of evidence based on that. So basically you can get exclusion of evidence based on charter violation. So that's why we learned in a criminal justice system, 24-2 is used as an exclusionary rule addition to what we have already have in evidence law, right? Are we clear? So we are talking about how evidence law has been evolved how evidence law have been shaped by our constitution and how it has potential of being shaped by further implementation right so for to understand the evidence law we need to understand how evidence law has been actually used in the in our system right so evidence law is used in the civil system so in that situation we will talk about the civil law principle in criminal justice system we just learned how criminal justice would work right and then we will see sometimes we are in a tribunal or somewhere you know not in the actual court process so they have their own way to work around the uh, evidence law right but end of the day the Canada Evidence Act is a big boss you cannot annoy the big boss right so you cannot take something which cannot happen in the evidence law right so family law act we use that so in Ontario we have two provision one is Canada evidence act and one is Ontario evidence act right so that kind of uh, things we will learn as we go along in my classes and I will take you pathway from how it connects uh, to understand the use of evidence you have to understand the 
rule of rules of the evidence you have to see how it would be used in a trial like model are you in a tribunal are you in a motion are you in a in an application are you in a civil trial are you in a criminal trial so a criminal case so what are the stakes of your clients so evidence law has its own uses and its practice as per that so it it keeps revolving it keeps you know revolving around the situation and it evolves according to the situation right to understand you should the prerequisite for evidence law is you should understand the trial system so you should understand what is your role as a defense counsel as a crown counsel as a family lawyer for a divorce or um, you know in a civil litigation or personal injury case or what 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 what's the matter what's the issue what what is going in in right there right so that is the basic understanding of uh, then we will see there are certain common law principles which will still part of our canadian evidence act we did not rule out so whatever we had in can in back in england right so we continue to use it as it was used then and there so ev evidence law has an overlap admissibility rules it coming from the evidence law as well as rules of evidence evolved and established by canada evidence act as well as common law so they go hand in hand who has the upper hand the, of course canada evidence act has an upper hand in that right so that's how it works do you have any question for that right so then we will see just because something is there it does not mean it has to go in the trial right that means there is a filter for the evidence for example one filter we have is a lawyer client privilege you come to my office you say goal this is what my problem is and i need to talk about this issue and in that situation i would be giving you legal advice right so whatever you get, um, get through legal advice that is not admissible nobody can compel me to go and there and say like hey what kevin asked you in that legal advice right so because that may be a proof of evidence but no that won't go like that because solicitor client privilege overrules it right so the next so i'm saying uh, solicitor client privilege would overrule it right then we have uh, marital privileges spouses cannot be forced to say something what they communicated to each other correct so they cannot be compelled to do so so then we have certain types of government records third party records because of their sensitive issues they have their own criteria they have their own um uh you can say um filters and evidence law just because they are there they are not evidence right so first of all we will see what is evidence and then we are learning whatever is evidence just because it's there it need not to be part of the trial correct admissibility right so admissibility has its own filter then the next thing we have is how do we get evidence to the trial right it has to be a direct evidence for example this is the highlighter we prove it it has cold fingerprints correct so it's it's a physical piece of evidence right so this video is an evidence right my color of my dress is a evidence right it can be proved that she always on wednesday she's wear a black she's wearing a black dress for work right so that that is n there can be a direct evidence a physical evidence or the witnesses do bring the evidence right as in testimony very good so they can give you a circumstantial evidence or they can give you opinion evidence at times right they can help you like oh i saw kevin coming to zoom session but i never saw him signing off the zoom session right so it's like a circumstantial thing right then we will be using the cases to go along it and then we will use the cases to understand how these things have been actually implemented why something worked in one situation and why it didn't work in a certain certain situation and that's the level the you know our examiner is trying to get from us have we clear so next thing we have is the rule regarding the evidence is how you will get to down to the truth of an evidence right 
for example if a person is if a if this piece uh, this highlighter is there you can simply use my fingerprints and get ex, you know forensic report or something like that to see whether goes act fingerprints are there or not right but if it is a person how would you make sure they're saying the truth right so that truth we can only reach by getting to the how pardon me yes and what would we do in the trial correct direct examination if it's my evidence uh, that i would be doing it if it's your client i would be cross-examining to take him to the truth right to understand whether it They are. They have their own rules. Pre-trial hearings. They have their own rules, but they have the same structure. To understand the evidence law, first of all, you first of all we have to see the use of the evidence. What we are doing in an evidence. What is evidence, right? The evidence simply means proof. Proof can be anything, correct? So then we use the case laws and we understand why something, even though it was available in common law, it was not used uh, uh, in our uh, trial it couldn't be used in the trial correct and evidence has two basic components necessity and materiality correct things should be crucial for the trial to bring and they should mean something in the trial right just because something is there you cannot bring the whole village to prove something right so then we have the best evidence rule in the in the system where we just trying to see how we can go around that and we'll, we can go how evidence can be uh, proved and how what evidence can be proved in this do you have any question on this Kevin very good so we'll say if you and me both were there right and you were the one who was talking to the guy who um, you were you were the teller on that day and i was the next teller right ne we we both work in the bank there was a bank the guy came with a forged check, check right i was sitting next to you so you are the, according to the best evidence rule you are the one who should be there in the court telling the story not me right very good or it can be an opinion or something right then we have the rules regarding hearsay by saying what is hearsay what is not hearsay right that's how it works so that's what our basic evidence law is then we have the confessions then we have two components civil trial and the criminal trial so as we go along and learn the subject we will go through the civil component and the criminal component and we'll also go through the overlapping component whatever the evidence law is so we'll learn this and then we will bifurcate into civil and then into the criminal law that's how I teach. That's how I help my students to develop understanding from the day one so that rather than being overwhelmed with all the information, they should know that what I'm going to do with this information, what it means for me as a lawyer. How, can, how would I use it in that, this information? How would I convince anybody about this information and say, you know what, I know this, I know I get it, right? So NC exam is also about, you know, letting the examiner know, oh, I get it, correct? So you have to do the legal analysis. If the legal analysis, uh, the key components are missing, then the examiner would might think like, oh, you are not you know, that aware about the component, right? Any other question on this one? First is the identification of the issue. First, we have to see, am I in the civil trial? I'm in the criminal trial. So what are the stakes of a person? One chapter close at that moment, right? So the next thing we have over there is uh, going for the understanding of how we will be using it, right? You can say, uh, as um, Brown v. Dunn said, as this case said, you don't have to rephrase it that. You have to see how it, you prove how it is relevant, how it would be used in this situation.
no they don't no 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 the understanding is um, uh, crucial than uh, factor than the because they they know it's an open book exam they don't want you to copy paste the stuff but if it's something very relevant per se that dissenting opinion by justice beats on past the para number 56 you can say that but they don't even even if you say that canada for i'm just cooking up a story canada versus cook just as beat says a dissenting opinion that's fine good enough yes i've been working with remediation plans and i haven't seen anybody going through um, you know failing an exam for not quoting the exact you know thing in a in a more proper way as long as you do the analysis you related relating to the facts is more crucial than anything else like what 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 this case what this case actually means here right so this that's how our evidence law works and that's how evidence law has been used and the uh, understanding of a criminal trial method rights of a criminal um, i always recommend reading uh, doing criminal law exam prior to the evidence law because it makes more sense to you and even if you're not doing that uh, canadian um, uh, criminal law exam before that you should try to review it from the mickey components of understanding what the accused rights are because if there if he has rights at, as per the criminal um, law system he would have the same rights in the evidence law as well right so the trial he would have the same issues any other question over here i can ask you before i move on to the next class